Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Math 171. Uh, this is a, a dual section course. Uh, this is for section 652A and 852A. Uh, this is an asynchronous course, um, so we don't meet together. Uh, and so uh, budgeting your time is, is really important. Um, I wanted to uh, take a little bit of time to talk about course policies and procedures with you. Uh, the first day of the semester, I really want to focus on policies and procedures, get everyone comfortable with the way uh, that the course works, um, and then we can really focus in on the content for the rest of the session. Uh, we only have eight weeks together. It's not very long, um, and we have a lot to get through. Um, there's not a lot I can do to spare you from that. Um, but I want to see every student in this class be successful. I'm here to be a support for you. Um, if you have any questions about the content, please reach out. Um, if you uh, need me to work with you, please reach out. Uh, email is the quickest way for me to get in touch with you. Um, if you have tech issues, uh, if you need to borrow a Chromebook from the college, or if you're having uh, issues with internet access, please reach out. I can help. Um, if you need help lining up a tutor <clears throat> and you want to sit down with someone and get some one-on-one -on -one help, uh, please reach out. I'm here to help. I'm here to be a support for you. So uh, let's look over Blackboard um, and the syllabus. I am going to try and keep this video to 10 minutes, but no promises. So the course officially starts on Monday, uh, January 9th, this coming Monday from when I'm recording. I'm recording on the 4th. Um, <clears throat> Blackboard partially opens on Saturday. So on Saturday, you can open the course, but you're not able to access uh, any assignments, so you're not able to see very much. Uh, so make sure you understand that. Um, I'm going to go over the syllabus in a minute. Let's start by clicking around Blackboard a little bit. So Blackboard should land on the coursework page. Let me take this out of edit mode. <clears throat> coursework is where you'll spend most of your time in this class. Uh, if you have a, an odd um, screen resolution, you might just see the coursework page and have to open up the menu to see other options. Uh, over here, and again, mine looks a little different because I'm an instructor, uh, there's an announcement tab. I'll post this video in the announcement tab. There's a start here button. I'll post this video and start here. Uh, there's a link to the syllabus and to a digital calculator. The syllabus, um, the course entry assignment discussion post. This is very important for you to do. Please go do it on the first day of class. If you do not complete the course entry assignment, you're going to get kicked out of the class and I can't protect you from that, so make sure you complete the course entry assignment. Uh, instructor contact, email is absolutely the easiest way to get in touch with me. Uh, I'm only on campus three days a week, so email. I, I work really hard to try to get back to everyone within an hour. Um, sometimes it takes longer than that, particularly if I'm sleeping, um, but I, I try to get back, I try to be responsive to emails. And really, uh, make a commitment to get back to everyone within 24 hours. So email is the best way to get in touch with me. If we need to meet virtually, there's a Zoom meeting room, campus resources. The Learning Center offers free in-person and virtual over Zoom tutoring. That is a great resource for this course. Uh, discussion board, the only discussion board is the course entry assignment that you really need to do. Go do it on the first day of class. And then grades gives you the projected grade for the semester and list out all the assignments that we'll be working on. Um, the, the thing I want you to note, <clears throat> and I do think that as of right now, it's correct, but I do not set the due dates in the grade center. Blackboard automatically generates those. And I think Blackboard did it correctly, but sometimes Blackboard gets it wrong, and I have no ability to change that. So do not follow the due dates here. 
in the Grade Center. It's a great place to see how you're performing on assignments, but don't follow these due dates. Please follow the pacing guide, which I'll show you in a second, or follow the actual due date on the assignment. Okay. So let's look at the syllabus together. You can find the syllabus right here. I already have it downloaded. Um, I go by Mr. Lee. Lee is my middle name. <clears throat> this is an eight week class. It starts January 9th, ends March 6th. Email is the best way to get in touch with me. I keep student hours. If you wanna meet, just please reach out. We'll set something up. We'll work something up either in person or virtual. I have a supervisor. It's an asynchronous course. Uh, the last day you can withdraw is uh, February 10th. Um, hopefully none of you will need to withdraw, but I also have that date on the pacing guide and I'm intentional to, to reach out to students uh, via email if, uh, if I'm concerned at all. Uh, I do wanna stress to everyone, make sure you are checking your student email regularly. Uh, both for me and for uh, so you can get in touch with with other people in the college that's the main way that the college communicates with you so make sure you're checking your student email regularly at least once a day I encourage you to get into a routine of checking your student email in the morning and in the afternoon uh, many of you are in a co-rec class so you'll need to take that co-rec in order to be in my class um, there is no textbook to purchase. <clears throat> we do use a website called MyOpenMath, but MyOpenMath is integrated with Blackboard. So when you're in Blackboard and you open an assignment, like right here, this takes you to MyOpenMath. So you're in MyOpenMath right now. So it's, it's single logon, single account, all integrated together here in Blackboard. So nothing to buy. The one thing you do, I would really encourage you to buy to invest in is a graphing calculator. I got one right here, something in the TI-83 family. Uh, I am not going to pull up, uh, sometimes I pull up eBay and show you how you can buy these. You can find them on eBay for 20 bucks. Uh, I encourage you to pick one up. Uh, there are apps out there, there's software out there. The reason why I'd encourage you to pick one up is one, I don't want you at some point in your educational career to be expected to be an expert in one and not have not seen one before. Like I don't want you ending up in a Calc 2 class or a Calc 3 class and the instructor uh, expecting you to know how to do what, use it, uh, all of your classmates know how to use it and you be at a disadvantage. Uh, two, I see a lot of students who try to tab hop so they try to hop between the, you know, their calculator app or, well, they try to hop between the calculator app and an assignment. And in tab hopping, they make a mistake. And they also are slower at doing a, a question. And that ends up causing them a lot of heartache and uh, wastes them a lot of time. So the nice part about having the physical calculator is that when you're working on your laptop, which is a great place to work, uh, you can have your laptop and your notebook and your calculator out all at once and you can see all three of them conveniently at the same time. Um, our textbook, <clears throat> if I, I, I don't wanna waste too much of your time right now. You can find the textbook right here uh, it is, we're only using the first four chapters right now, but you can find it on Amazon. It's usually like, you can maybe find a cheaper copy if you search around, but if you want to buy a physical copy of the book, you can. Most students just use the virtual text, and so the text is always built in to the topic. So here's the text here. So most students just use the virtual text instead of the buying the physical textbook. Uh, you can usually find used copies of it for around nine bucks if you shop a little bit. Okay. Um, 
course description is important, learning outcomes is important. I'll make sure that we cover all the learning outcomes for this course. Uh, we're using the 10-point grading scale. How is your grade calculated? <clears throat> there are four exams uh, worth 7.5% each. So tests in this class are worth 30%. I purposely set it up so that you can comfortably fail every exam in the class and still comfortably pass the class. Uh, exams are typically due on Saturday night. So let's go down here to the pacing guide. The pacing guide is on the last page of the syllabus. If you print anything, I really encourage you to print this pacing guide. I've printed some copies of it. You can swing by my office if you want, want me to hand you a copy. Um, so you see first test is due here, second test, third test. Eight week class, test every two weeks. First three tests are due and the fourth test, yeah, all the tests are due by 11.55 p.m. Saturday night. Tests have a two hour time limit. Tests, uh, when you take the test, there's a clock in the top right corner that ticks down. Um, that two hour time limit, so, so the test turns off at 11.55 p.m. So at the very latest, you want to start the test at 9.55 p.m. to have the full two hour time. Um, all of the test questions come directly from the homework and lab assignments. So there should be no surprises on the exams. Okay, there's four exams. Every week you also have a lab assignment. And I'm going to just show these while we're, here, while we're talking about it. So you scroll down here, <clears throat> test one right here, test two, <clears throat> test three, Test four, do every other Saturday. Every week, every Thursday night, you have a lab due. You see the labs listed here. We can open a lab. Here's lab six. Labs are typically five questions long. And let's purposely get everything wrong. You can retake a lab. You get three attempts on each lab. It says that up here. So I would, I, right now I am, I am starting my second attempt. You get three attempts on each lab. The highest score is the one that's recorded. So if you score an 80, then a 90, and then a 70, that 90 would be the one that's recorded. All right, and then looking back at the pacing guide, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, with the exception of this coming Monday because of MLK Day, and with the exception of the day when you need to go complete the course entry assignment, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you have a homework assignment due. Let's pull up the first homework assignment and just take a look at it for a minute. First assignment is 19 questions long. You can jump around questions if you want. You can leave the assignment and come back. Let's purposely get this question wrong a few times. When you get a question wrong, you can ask for a similar question. <clears throat> you can see over here, this number now says 97. This number to the right will continue to count down. You get 100 attempts on each homework question. Your highest score attempt is the one that's recorded. So you can keep trying a question until you get it correct. When you get it correct, you get full credit for it. There is no penalty for trying and getting something wrong. So please take advantage of multiple attempts. Your homework grade is 40% of your overall grade. And your homework grade almost always dictates your grade in the class. It's the biggest indicator of your grade in the class. 
students that budget the time, take advantage of unlimited attempts, and get support when they need it, do really well in this class and are successful. Students that aren't budgeting the time that they need really struggle. I want to see every one of you be successful, so make sure you're budgeting the time that you need. I really encourage you to budget two hours a day towards this class. Make a calendar, make a, you put together a planner, budget two hours a day so that you can turn in really strong homework grades and, and do really well. Uh, let's just take a look at section 1.1. <clears throat> Every section is set up basically like this. Uh, there is a lecture video. Sometimes it's broken up into parts. Spectrum. Um, uh, it wants to show me a right lead. Right now, we'll close that. But there's a lecture video. There's the text. And then there's videos that are more topic focused. And I'm going to fix the links on these in a second. I'm not sure why this isn't working. Um, there's, there's videos that are more topic focused. Um, so make sure you're taking the time to um, watch the lecture, read the text, look over videos. In addition to all of those videos, most questions also have a help video that go with them. So make sure you're taking the time to use the embedded support. Uh, and then if you need additional support, make sure you're, you're taking the time and space that you need to uh, reach out to me or uh, to swing by tutoring. All right, I'm here to support you. I'm here to help. Uh, and I look forward to our session together.